Hell yeah. My first thought is like, is this metal? And it's like, yeah. Yeah, listen to that guitar that riff. Guitar riff it's, the, the it's the gallop. They invented galloping. They did it before Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fact check. Uh, write us an email. Fight me. Who invented galloping? Horses? <laughs> Elfie. Elfie invented galloping. Uh, Elfie the cat is here with us. He's, Say something, Elfie. He's on my mic. He's uh, pleading the fifth right now. Wait, what, what year was this album? 1975? 77. 77, okay. Yeah, there was that metal gallop in 1977. If there's an earlier example, please tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's probably an example in country music, like slowed down or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, but with that kind of guitar tone and like palm muted, though. No, not like that, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, like William Tell Overture. <laughs> yeah. That's the first metal the first song. first metal song. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it's on bowed violins. <laughs> yeah, just put on some distortion. Whatever, violins are super metal. Yeah. Have you heard Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum? Yeah. Okay, we're on a real tangent right now. I guess it's a, this is another factoid, but relevant to the drum production, but I learned that... Was it Demosier? Michael Demosier. Demosier. <laughs> um, he doesn't use double kick pedals. He does not, yeah. All of the... Uh, well, how does the beat go in this song? Um <laughs> Yeah, that's all his right foot. He's like a very powerful right foot. If you listen closely, I, I encourage you to listen to headphones if you're not. But that main drum beat is, there's a lot of ghost notes on the snare. And he's sort of doing a paradiddle between his right foot and his left hand. But oh. he's accenting the snare on the two and four, like for the back beats. Really cool. Really groovy. Great drummer. Yeah, and I'm glad that he was able to get the tone he wanted because it's so aggressive and appropriately for this song because it was inspired by righteous anger. That the story has been told like a million times in documentaries and stuff, but uh, you should look it up if you're if you haven't heard of it. They have a behind the music on VH1 that's probably on YouTube. They basically wrote this song as, as a, a direct response. Yeah, their record label wasn't treating them very well, so pretty messed up. Actually. Very aggressive drumming, and yet again, there's dynamics. <laughs> You could hear the ghost notes, but also it's not dialed up to 11 all the time. Yeah, because this is a very jazz-inspired drummer. Exactly, yeah. I think because of this song, he might... Okay, maybe we're going to edit this, this out. <laughs> <laughs> I think because of this song, I think he's better than John Bonham. <laughs> <laughs> That's my opinion. <laughs> okay. We all have a bunch of hot takes today. Yeah, and, we and I am biased because I like Heart more than Led Zeppelin. Yeah, maybe one day we'll sell our hot takes on Patreon, on Patreon. for like a dollar. Sign up to our Patreon if you want to hear all of our hot takes. If you want to hear all of our asshole hot take comments, I hope they make you laugh. I might get my drummer card revoked if we actually air that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what's next? Rainbow in the Dark. How do we segue this? Oh. Chart. So he's a better drummer than John Bonham. <laughs> Alfie. Alfie, that's too noisy. Alfie, that's loud. Hey. We're recording. <laughs> Alfie has some unconventional recording ideas. Really loves that plastic bag sound. Did John Bonham influence Bill Ward or Vinnie Apice? I feel like the connection with John Bonham and Bill Ward that I wanted to say was already said in the beginning. Um, we have that down, that he set the bar. I, I feel like I said that like a dozen times already. Yeah. <laughs> John Bond, I'm John Bond, I'm John Bond. <laughs> so the next song we have is um, Rainbow in the Dark by Dio. Mm -hmm. And uh, we mentioned Dio earlier. And we have to talk about Black Sabbath again. <laughs> Just a brief history of Black Sabbath from Paranoid Onwards, where we left off in the last episode. I believe their first three or four albums were produced by Roger Bain. After Paranoid, they did Master of Reality, and then after Master of Reality, it was Volume 4. And after Volume 4, I believe Tony Iommi started producing the band. In my opinion, I think with each Black Sabbath album, they just didn't sound much better than they did in Paranoid and Master of Reality. I feel like their peak production of this era, the Aussie era, was Paranoid and Master of Reality. And it's my theory that it has something to do with the producer being Tony Iommi. But at the same time, I sort of lost interest in these albums anyway. Everything after Master of Reality. I mean, there's some good songs in Volume 4, in my opinion, and in Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, but I don't even know what their, the rest of their albums are. It's like Technical Ecstasy and something else. I, I know this is true, that Bill Ward was struggling with drugs throughout this whole period. And you could tell in his drumming, like it wasn't as 
as great as it was in their first three albums. And by the time it was 1980, I guess the whole story of Ozzy is another podcast, probably. <laughs> but they did kick Ozzy out of the band and had Ronnie James Dio be the singer for their Heaven and Hell album. 1980. 1980. In my opinion, this is not Bill Ward as his best self. I sort of feel like he tamed himself to fit the style of music that Black Sabbath was writing for for Dio to for sing. Dio to sing. Yeah. After Heaven and Hell, they did Mob Rules and they, they kicked Bill Ward out of the band and had Vinny Apice as their drummer. And in my opinion, this era of Black Sabbath, Vinny Apice was a more appropriate fit. So you're pretty much saying that Vinny Apice is a good drummer for Dio's yeah. vocals. I, I think they're a good match for each other. And after Mob Rules, Dio started his own band called Dio, and Vinny Apice was his drummer. And oh yeah, I forgot to say this, but Bill Ward never toured for the Heaven and Hell album. Vinny Apice was the, the touring drummer for that album. And that sound of Dio and Vinny Apice together, they just amplified that even more, in my opinion, for the Holy Diver album, which is what this track is from. What year is that? 1983. 1983. Holy Diver album. And I, I should probably mention that Heaven and Hell was produced by Martin Birch. Again. Oh, right. <laughs> but Holy Diver was produced by Ronnie James Dio. And I think the drums sound amazing in this. I really like Vinny Apice as a drummer here. He's not as technical or jazz-inspired as Bill Ward was. He's definitely a rock drummer. You could hear it in the kind of fills he plays. It's actually um, very arena rock. <laughs> but I do like the sound here. It didn't have that ridiculous shotgun snare sound yet. Yeah, he hits hard. His fills really flow with the song. I think my favorite part of the drum production here is the toms. We're going to play this song and listen for the toms. And in particular, that main riff that happens when it comes back after one or two choruses. Like that thing with the mm -hmm. keyboard. Yeah, it, it matches up with the bass guitar. You do that on the two and four. One. Ding, bing. Vinny Apice hits the toms there. It hits really hard. It's amazing sounding to me. Cool. Let's give it a listen. All right, here's Rainbow in the Dark by Dio's debut album, Holy Diver, 1983. 